please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. And that's the bell. It's actually a third of a percent higher on the Sensex, 120 up and 20 up on uh, the Nifty. That's 0.2. So uh, that's uh, a bit of a discrepancy between the two tall indices and the Nifty Bank as well point to higher and I think their Yes Bank is uh, yeah. helping. Adani Ports has risen. Uh, clearly, uh, Karan Adani's statement that free cash flows are coming now yes. uh, thick and fast uh, has helped that stock. HPCL is up 0.1% uh, uh, approx. Mm, India Bulls Housing 1%. That's been having a, a good run for the past couple of days. HUL now regaining. Uh, after all, yesterday it saw profit taking on good news and today there's buying. Uh, HCL Tech uh, is up 1%. So market's just about pleased with the numbers. Remember, it's already gained a lot, a, a, a goodish bit. Tech Mahindra closely following suit, again up about a percent. Coal India, Reliance, uh, Reliance of course numbers due today. iSure, HDFC, uh, Bharti Infital, all of them are about a little over half a percent higher. Actually, a decent performance at the index level, considering that yesterday it did set a record. Uh, on the weak side, Ultratech Cement is still paying for those numbers uh, which didn't flatter. Infosys is down almost a percent, well, 0.7. Bharti Etel, the numbers again did not flatter so much, and that's down about 0.67. Vedanta, Z, Wipro, Hero Moto, uh, Tata Motors, ICICI Bank, uh, Aurobindo, Bajaj Finance, all of them down between a quarter and a half a percent. Uh, so nothing's down really majorly, nothing more than one percent. Uh, and on the gainers, uh, what's taking away the honours is Adani Ports, Adani Ports, Adani Ports. Okay. Well, you know, in the broader markets, Lata, it's absolutely flat right now. But the biggest theme that stands out is the fact that all these leverage stocks continue to fall this morning. Whether it's GBK Power, JP Infra, Rel Power, Adani Power, all these stocks are down anywhere between 2 to 5 odd percent. So it just gives you uh, an indication that, you know, perhaps the party is over as far as these uh, lev highly leveraged stocks are concerned. In terms of the GS GST theme, there are many stocks that are playing out on the upside. Wandala is up almost 6% as GST on amusement theme parks has been reduced from 28 to 18%. Almost 7% higher now on Wandala. You have JN Irrigation, GST and drip irrigation uh, facilities have been reduced from 18 to 12%. So JN Irrigation is in the green this morning. Gitanjali Gems, GST on studded jewellery. Remember the company just told us that working capital will get reduced. So Gitanjali Gems is trading in the green 2% higher there. TBZ is also 2.5% higher there. And a couple of other stocks, Biocon, their deal with um, on the biosimilar space with Sandoz, Biocon is holding up in the green, up almost about two odd percent or so. And uh, you know, uh, some of these heavyweights continue to be in uh, in action. So names like HCL Tech, Yes Bank, etc. But otherwise, Anuj, the mid-cap space, you know, once again moved into the red. Is there a risk of a further sell-off in mid-caps? Uh, we will find out, uh, Sonia, about that. Uh, it's not uh, an inspiring opening, let's put it that way. Even Yes Bank, for example, has uh, uh, not really you know, seen follow through. It will be interesting to see at lower level there is some buying on that, but uh, that's also not had a decent start. So uh, uh, let's see if, uh, okay, three fourths of 1% higher now on that stock. Uh, uh, in the mid cap, I think, yes, there is clearly some problem points. So advanced decline is still in favor of advances. Let's see if that starts to turn because that, I think, would be the first indicator of what could lie ahead in the mid cap space. Uh, but Ashwini, your thoughts on market opening and is there a trade? See, early morning, uh, we did try to gap up, but at higher levels, we seem to have rejected, uh, you know, uh, the place where the uptrend could have continued. So uh, this is a fairly fierce rejection. And uh, I think mid-cap sell-off should continue. And I think today, uh, you know, banks may not be help, uh, may not be able to help all that much. So right now, what we've done is we've taken short position on the uh, bank Nifty, and uh, chances are we could give back uh, a lot of yesterday's gain. Okay. Oh, well, uh, actually, uh, even as you spoke, uh, Ashwin, and I guess you were looking at it, mid-caps have now lost a third of a percent. So it's 60 down on the mid-cap index, uh, and uh, the advanced declines are fast turning in favor of the decliners. Uh, uh, the Nifty is in the red, minorly, minorly and uh, Sensex as well, coming down now to flat terrain. Uh, it's either flat or red, actually, on the screen. Mid-cap actually losing strength uh, uh, mm. rather rapidly. Mm. Mitesh, anything, uh, any short trade at all? Yeah, uh, I think uh, I would take a needle stock trade and that's not on the mid-cap side. I think, you know, pretty much uh, somewhere between the last year and the mid-cap space. Okay. Uh, Amaraja batteries, I think, is breaking below key support levels and it had a sell signal yesterday on the chart. So keeping a stop just about days high, I think, can be shorted for targets of around 800.
Right. Okay, I think Yes Bank has seen fresh buying once again. So mm -hmm. clearly, uh, you know, uh, that's the one which stands out. Uh, but in the broader market, there's a bit of a weakness. Uh, Prakash, anything on your radar? Yes, uh, HDI looking weak, can see a slight to levels closer to 58 zone. Mm -hmm. So is the case with Z Enterprises. Looks like a target around 575 is possible on the downside. Both slides. Okay. okay. Uh, just a couple of uh, more stocks. Scient, by the way, came out with a good set of numbers, better than what the street was estimating. The dollar revenue growth about 1.5%. So Scient has been moving up with a bit of strength, 2% higher now. Sandeep, uh, just a quick word from your end on uh, the mid-cap IT space. We've seen good numbers come in from the likes of Mindtree, etc. Anything that stands out? Well, I think engineering specific stories in the second rung IT, I think the, some of the stories what you mentioned, I think they are going to be on a good footing. Uh, they have come out of a very bad phase. I think the entire industry itself has come out of a very challenging phase. But I think the second rung people who are, uh, we have got a couple of options which are targeting specific engineering segment. And I think they are going to have an extremely high growth rate coming compared to what they were posting in the last two years. At least uh, that kind of a growth rate coming in the next two to three years. So I think they are going to be the potential doublers in the next two years. So I I guess a lot of investor interest will flow towards it. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Uh, Sandeep, thank you very much for joining us with your early morning uh, analysis on the numbers and on the fundamentals of several stocks. Uh, actually, uh, uh, let's thank our technical advisors as well, but uh, not before we ask Ashwini, any big call for the day? See, big call is to, uh, you know, get short on uh, particularly these smaller stocks like RCOM, JSW Steel, JSPL, etc., uh, things which have had vertical runs. Mm. And uh, out there, you should be able to uh, get traction on the downside soon. Okay. Thank so, you very much. Yeah, sorry. No. Okay, so uh, uh, absolutely flat for now on the index itself. Uh, just a couple of more stocks. You know, uh, the last few days have been exceptionally good for Just Dial. Today as well, Just Dial has picked up pace. Uh, in fact, in the last one month, it's gone from around 450 or so. Look at that, 570. So there is pressure in the mid caps, but then there are a lot of mid cap stocks. It was that are down 12% yesterday, Sonia. 12% yeah. in late trade yesterday. In fact, uh, uh, this is one stock where uh, you know the gap up uh, could actually be sold into because, uh, okay. uh, and this is the kind of stocks that you you know got to be a bit cautious about mm -hmm. because if you see the chart of uh, the stock yesterday as well, it slipped off quite a bit. Uh, uh, Ashwini, it's uh, two percent higher right now. Is there a trade here? The two percent higher should be used to sell into just dial because uh, yesterday's decline chances are will continue at some point. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, at the moment, uh, the mid-caps are just about uh, steadied themselves. But if you look at the advanced declines, there's no steadying at all. Mm. It is, yeah. uh, if, if you can pull up the chart, I know it's just about the, the first seven minutes of trade. But, uh, you know, we started off with an advantage for the advancers. Mm. And it so rapidly uh, became, uh, uh, you know, more decliners than advancers. So clearly, there is, yeah, there's the pain point. See, it barely lasted for three minutes. Uh, the gain that advancing stocks had over declining and then uh, the ratio has moved so heavily in favor of uh, the sellers. We we'll have to wait and see. At the moment it's flat at an index level but a lot of pain in all those uh, leveraged uh, yes. companies, the NCLT companies, uh, the, the stressed metal and power stocks, uh, all of them seeing pain. Also, Good. I want to mention Ultratech Cement is falling further. Remember, we saw a margin disappointment yesterday led by lower realization. So, Ultratech Cement is now down more than one odd percent. But or performance so. getting rewarded, Yes Bank and Adani Ports. Uh, I think Adani Ports is a stock which we may have to keep yeah. on our the radar. Ad the advanced decline is already in favor of decline. So, uh, let's see. Normally, what happens on Fridays after sort of deleveraging is that by 11, 12, you know, you see a lot of this pain payout pain uh, getting over a lot of stocks are hitting lows of the day mm -hmm. i think bml gmr uh, that's also hit the low of the day uh, also you know a couple of other stocks like ptc ramco simmons they are hitting lows of the day so a couple of these stocks are uh, seeing lower levels uh, let's invite our market master then mahesh patil co-chief investment officer at aditya birla amc uh, sun life amc is with us uh, good morning uh, then uh, mahesh uh, yeah good morning <coughs> so do you think this Last couple of days or weeks have given a bit of a warning sign that the 2017 mid-cap party, which was just one-way street, uh, things could be changing a bit? Yeah, we've seen some volatility uh, in the recent past, uh, while the uh, Nifty continues to really uh, move up. So, yeah, I think people have been, uh, you can't be complacent. I mean, last year, I mean, there was very little volatility we saw in the broader index and also and in the uh, small and mid-cap space. But I think going forward, uh, one can expect slightly higher volatility, it's what uh, looks like. 
and the margin for error is very little in some of these names, right? So, if there is anything negative, yeah, you would see a uh, slightly higher reaction over there and that is what currently what we are seeing. There was a theory that uh, Anuj uh, discussed earlier in the morning, especially after this three days of mid-cap uh, fall that we have seen. Yeah. Uh, was last year the year of mid-cap and this year the year of long, uh, large caps, would you say? Yeah, interesting. I think we were also debating that, uh, whether, okay, this year uh, Nifty should do well because, uh, I mean, if you look at the driver for Nifty would be the larger flows, uh, FIA mm. flows, which were not so strong in the last calendar yes. year. As we look into this calendar year, uh, there is a reason to believe that uh, A, the flows into emerging markets continue to remain fairly strong, right, uh, with dollar index uh, hitting a new low. And uh, India flows uh, emerging market funds, if you look at the India overweight, which was there, which is to be around 4 to 5 percent, has come down to below 2 percent or so. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there is room for uh, more money to come into India from FIS this year. So, given that, uh, yeah, one could probably see the uh, larger caps doing slightly better and, and relative valuations there are also slightly favorable. So, yeah, it could happen, yeah. Now, I am uh, asking a very reporter question. That big uh, FII number yesterday, uh, so should we take it that FII buying is resumed in some fashion? I don't think we can look at the one day number, right? They could be uh, in a particular stock or there could be some uh, block deal which could have happened. But uh, I think uh, indications for this year for FIA flows into uh, this thing, it looks slightly better because last year we just had around $6 billion. Normally, we used to get around uh, $14, $15 billion on an annual basis. And looking at the global outlook and risk capital and especially outlook on emerging market flows, I think the number could easily uh, be double uh, this year when what we saw last year. Okay, Mahesh, hi, good morning. In fact, at that meeting that we had last week, the, where the fund managers were meeting, uh, there as well you said that, you know, things are extremely bullish for the market. But I was just going through some of your funds and you have a high exposure in the IT space, Infosys, HCL Tech, etc. in your BSL frontline equity fund. Um, has the tide turned for the IT sector and do you see better days yet? So the IT sector is still trying to uh, move out from that uh, lower growth or band of around uh, 7 to 8 percent kind of a volume growth. There is expectation that with U.S. Uh, doing better, uh, we have seen uh, U.S. corporate uh, with the tax cuts, uh, you will see profitability will be higher. You would potentially see higher uh, spends, uh, discretionary spends from U.S. corporates going into the next, uh, this calendar year. So if that happens, yeah, you could see a revision. But as of now, we haven't yet seen the commentary from the companies uh, improving. Uh, there are, at least in the digital space, we are seeing some of the larger companies now trying to get larger deal wins, so which is a bit positive. And so I think the sector looks good from a value, it's underperformed. Uh, valuations are not demanding over there. But the growth trajectory to improve, I think one has to wait for uh, one or two quarters to see if that uh, turns around. And rupee hasn't been very supportive for these companies because at a time when your top line growth has been pretty modest and uh, then you don't have the margin levers also come playing in, uh, we haven't seen any significant growth in profit over there. But if rupee kind of uh, depreciate, which could be a view uh, from here on, I think you could see a 2-3% depreciation in the rupee. I think the stocks will do reasonably well. Okay, by the way, the market is, uh, you know, a lot of mid caps are seeing selling pressure. Jindal Steel and Power, SRF, uh, GSW Steel, just look at the chart of Just Dial. It's just continuing with yesterday's massive slam dunk that it had and that gap up actually was used to uh, sell into and that stock is now down about 1%. Uh, uh, consumption stocks have done uh, re remarkably well, branded plays have done well, uh, Mahesh, but valuations of course are high. So, uh, how would you position yourself in these stocks? So, yeah, consumption story I think looks still fairly okay. I mean, we've seen this quarter uh, people expecting that the rural demand should start to improve. Uh, so that's a big, uh, big driver for consumption, especially the low ticket uh, consumer staples as well as consumer durables. And looking at the government focus on rural area coming in the next uh, couple of years, I think we should see that should be a fairly strong uh, uh, growth area for consumption to pick up uh, in the next uh, few years. And, and these companies are no doubt expensive, but uh, clearly in some of these, especially the consumer discretionary names, the uh, consumer durable. There is room for uh, uh, penetrations to increase uh, in certain categories and also the impact of uh, move from unorganized to organized should help them to drive a slightly better growth rate. So I think the visibility in terms of growth in some of these names looks fairly good uh, in the coming years. 
And so, despite the higher valuation, I think uh, I think valuations market is not going to look too much and because uh, and dissect that as long as there is earnings growth and my valuations are not exorbitant rate. I think the stocks uh, should be fairly good, and we are positive on these names. Okay, you know, I I, I was going to ask the same question that Anuja asked you. Yeah. Hindustan Unilever volume growth uh, at 11.2 percent, and even the commentary that uh, uh, you know rural markets they are they are pleased with the uh, performance. Uh, will that therefore make you? Inc uh, where would your accent light? Would still lie in discretionaries rather than staples? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say uh, so because uh, the staples again the valuations are higher. Mm -hmm. We don't see any meaningful uh, upgrade. I mean, compared to the lower base mm -hmm. of the last year, yeah, the numbers are looking good. Okay. But again, the uh, growth rates over there would still be uh, volume growth would still be around eight nine percent. I don't see that going up. Okay. Whereas in the discretionary sectors, the growth rates could be in the mid teens okay. or there. So and that's the difference would yeah. be. I wanted to come to capex. Yeah. Uh, you know, but there were two or three bright things. Uh, the expectation of uh, more road contracts uh, because of the government's thrust, and uh, a, a, a usually conservative uh, uh, LNT uh, CFO. Couple of day, a couple of weeks back, told us that the last two months were very good. Anything that you that excites you about the investment infrastructure space? Yeah, so we have seen some uh, good order inflows in the uh, last few months, especially in the road sector, which has been dragging a bit uh, in the first half of this fiscal mm -hmm. year. We haven't seen much orders come through, so it's kind of a bunching of those orders which we are seeing okay. uh, mm -hmm. in this quarter. It's not like suddenly things have picked up. Uh, first half was a lean period. So that's where the excitement is. But overall, I think we've seen uh, infrastructure space where roads have been doing well for the last couple of years. There has clearly been a pickup uh, in railway ordering, which we've seen in this year, uh, both for railway track laying and for electrification. Uh, urban infrastructure orders are coming in uh, pretty well. A lot of the state uh, cities and municipalities, they are uh, spending money on that front. So that's uh, again a clear area where strong order inflows are coming in. Apart from that, uh, I would say that uh, the uh, capex cycle, the overall private sector capex, is still uh, some time away. Uh, the good thing there is that with the bank uh, recapitalization, the deleveraging in the corporate sector has started. So you would see that corporate is starting to deleverage uh, a year down the line, and and also with capital markets doing well. A lot of the companies are now starting to really approach the markets to raise uh, equity capital to fund uh, future uh, growth projects. So I think, yeah, you should see uh, the sector starting to revive now. By the way, just don't lose sight of what's happening in the mid-cap space That's because there is a, a, a big fall really in the mid-cap sector. Uh, you know, a lot of these large-cap names as well, names like JSPL, etc., falling quite a bit. Reliance Communications, Just Dial, Bharti Airtel, JP Infras of the world are obviously down about three, four percent. So it, it's looking uh, pretty sticky now in the broader markets. But you know, I just wanted to um, at an index level, actually, the index has done very well. So it swung to the other side. We fell about a third of a percent at the index level. The mid-cap index is what I'm talking about. Mm. And then look at the way things have recovered. So <laughs> all over the place, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to just take that point about the infrastructure, uh, uh, you know, stocks further because you have an BSL infrastructure fund as well. Yeah. It's given you great returns, almost 40 percent in one year versus the Nifty at 18 and a half percent. But do you think that these kind of returns can be replicated after the kind of valuations that we're seeing? So I think last year was a phenomenal year, not only for infra, but even for the other like mid and small cap sector. I mean, the mid cap index gave a return of almost 40 percent or so. So a lot of these infra companies are typically fall in these uh, mid cap space. I mean, very few large cap names are there. So that's the reason for the large performance what we saw in their index. But I think this is a sector which is coming in from a kind of a doldrums. Uh, we've seen last three, four years, the mm -hmm. infra sector capex the, has been uh, very, very low especially uh, private sector capex. And there are reasons to believe that uh, the cycle is likely to turn around. There are initial indicators like, for example, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, uh, the overall debt to equity ratio is coming down. Mm. So there is scope for companies to uh, re-leverage uh, down forward. Also the free cash flow to sales mm. ratio has been improving. Yeah. And, and as capacity utilizations move up, we should see companies starting to now look at capex plans. I mean, we have seen some green shoots in sectors like steel, for example, mm -hmm. oil and gas, fertilizer, where companies are starting to now uh, announce capex plans. So while you might not get these seller returns, what we saw last year, but I think the sector looks mm -hmm. to be set for a fairly good returns uh, beating the broader markets. 
Okay. okay. Is the big NBFC party over? Uh, of course, you know you you work for one company, you know. Which, but uh, you know, generally, uh, your sense about the kind of huge <laughs> that you had in NBFC is uh, as a sector is that coming to an end? Even if some stocks may do well. So I think NBFC sector is yeah looking some consolidation or some pause over there. I think the uh, turnaround in the interest rate cycle uh, is something which is uh, causing some worry over there. But I think there could be some margin pressures. Okay, uh, we could see that. Uh, in the, but the clear story in the NBSC sector is the broader growth uh, what we are seeing uh, in some of these places because there are a lot of areas where uh, which are underserved and, and NBFC which are catering to that sector and not really competing with the banks directly. I think there is enough room for them to grow. So while yeah, there could be some margin pressures over there, but I think uh, in certain areas, uh, especially uh, like for example in the small ticket financing, uh, rural financing, and uh, even in the mortgages, uh, companies catering to the uh, uh, self-employed class, uh, we see uh, continue to see a very pretty strong growth over there. So yeah, so while valuation re-rating from these levels is not likely, uh, you might see some consolidation and there could be some differentiation among the NBFCs also how they are uh, placed. But uh, I think the longer term story in NBFC still looks fairly good uh, in, in the few names. Sure, right. yeah. Thank you very much Mahesh for joining us. Uh, yes, uh, uh, probably not as heroic as last year but uh, some NBFCs may prevail. But this year's heroes could well be IT stocks or IT companies. Uh, uh, the stocks have been on a tear lately. And uh, what we want to ask right now is, are things finally on the mend? Uh, we've got the person who actually reported very good numbers. Uh, we're asking uh, Krishna Kumar Natarajan, the executive chairman at Mindtree. Also joining us in this discussion is Sudhin Apte, the CEO and research director at Offshore Insights. Gentlemen, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, to you, Mr. Natarajan, first, uh, uh, you know, this was uh, uh, a, f a very good performance that your company put up, but it is not to discuss uh, uh, a mind tree that we are calling you. Our orders, is the order flow, pricing and other fundamentals in IT space improving? I certainly think so, uh, Lata, and uh, it's wonderful to be on your show. Clearly, technology going beyond just being an enabler to being the business itself, we are seeing that in large global enterprises. Uh, to that extent, the investments in technology, how people are thinking about it, and there's far more clarity in terms of saying, how do we use technology to really be, become a competitive differentiator in the business and win market share is becoming a bigger and bigger theme in boards across enterprises. So I'm very, very optimistic in terms of the opportunities for technologies for the next few years. Rajan, good morning. You know, the, the question I have is that uh, at least the market is pricing in that maybe some companies are now adapting to the business model. You know, for last two years, the big worry was that is the Indian IT story over? Uh, and now, you know, it looks like uh, some companies are adapting. Uh, uh, would you say that uh, uh, that's right uh, in terms of, you know, moving to digital, in terms of cloud? and all. Are, are the business models changing? Uh, I would uh, think, uh, Anuj, uh, what uh, the question raised is the Indian IT story over. I think it's really starting. Uh, mm. I would think there's far more opportunities in the future. And I agree with you that obviously this needs to be done in a very different model compared to what uh, one was used to earlier. It's no more a cost efficiency play, mm -hmm. but how do you innovate and co-innovate for the customer? And digital and probably areas like that are very key. Mm. Certainly companies which took a call to call them out earlier, invested in them and got prepared for this change yeah, are starting to reap the benefits. But I certainly think the Indian IT industry has the capability and the confidence uh, to get prepared for the new world and gain much more prominence in the new world. Can you throw some more light on what the digital transformation could look like for a company like Mindtree? Because your own uh, a digital business has grown quite a bit. The proportion of digital to your overall pie has gone to almost 44% now. Um, what kind of uh, you know uh, steps can we expect to see from the company in the near future? That's a very interesting question, Sonia. Uh, like you said, I think uh, it was in 2014 we called out digital as an area of focus. 
and we also did not see it as a technology not as social media analytics or cloud but how do you really ensure that using some of this technologies we actually address the business problem so some of the early efforts in configuring the digital group as a business really embedding domain expertise and solving real business problem have really led us to a leadership position in digital and we clearly see the deal sizes in digital today are increasing i would think digital is getting more industrialized and in the last 12 months we have seen deal sizes which are multi million multi year in nature are increasing and we think mindtree is well positioned to really capture on that because of the track record we have in executing large complex digital transformative type of projects uh, oh. digital also beyond just technologies means that reskilling is extremely important because uh, the existing workforce needs to be really reskilled mm. in approaches which are very different oh. uh, which involves a very immersive learning experience uh, so that's going to be another challenge uh, which companies which are wanting to leverage mm. on the investments companies make in digital transformation need to do sure and sure. the last aspect which i would call out is mm. that the decision making is getting democratized so how are organizations preparing for that okay. is also important fair point uh, mr natarajan now let me move over to mr sudeen apte uh, uh, sudeen from your perch where you see several companies several suppliers and several buyers uh, are you getting a sense that indian companies are adapting and uh, 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 able to get more digital orders. Yeah, morning, Lata, and very happy to be uh, with KK after a long time. So good morning, KK. Uh, you know, a slightly different view than uh, what uh, KK talked about. Uh, primarily because I think you know uh, he, his views are more tuned to what Mindtree is going through and the performance at Mindtree. Mm. Overall, if you really look at you know, uh, if you ask me, one odd percent quarter over quarter, quarter over quarter growth for the companies which are published, and six percent or little lesser than that in constant current. is exactly in line with what we said a uh, uh, year ago or 11 months ago before the current fiscal year started that industry will grow by 6 to 7% uh, uh, you know uh, over year mm. over year uh, very few takers then but you know this is a third in the row that uh, our numbers very few takers at the start and they, you know it falls in line in that direction i think the market you know the if at all i have to say uh, good news uh, us looks uh, you know uh, stable uh, not substantially improving but uh, Uh, not you know very dull and not going down further so which is the biggest market so that's a good part about us and same for uk uh, bfsi uh, client conversation show that there is an interest but there is a tussle between buying from services companies versus buying from uh, pure play digital and uh, platform companies so while spend in bfsi uh, is uh, doing fine uh, essentially is not yielding into uh, outsourcing companies a uh, good part again there by speaking vertical you know some of the verticals which have been struggling for long uh, especially say energy uh, and also retail we started seeing some traction there which is a, a, a good news for a, a few firms banking on that and to uh, give a little twist to uh, what we have been talking so far on, on on a digital front which is your key question actually mm. uh, you know it's an opportunity and it's a it's a challenge uh, it's an opportunity uh, if uh, the technology company uh, has uh, you know started transforming well it's it's adopting uh, you know technology new business processes creating consulting capabilities creating very different business model closer to client and uh, uh, consultative led so you know a lot of those things need to happen uh, for transformation uh, a few have some of the larger companies obviously find it uh, mm. tougher because you know mending uh, yeah. 325000 people mm. or or more than that is uh, tough So I guess you know uh, digital poses an opportunity for mid-sized companies in the near term. Uh, bigger companies can evolve uh, yeah. and win in longer term. But I think you know in in this fiscal, the rest, last one quarter remaining and earlier part of a coming year uh, is going to be very yeah. similar uh, to what oh. we have been seeing in okay. last one year overall. Slightly better maybe. All right, gentlemen. Th- thanks a lot for your time today. You know, just have to. 
move on from that space now to market. But uh, Mr. Natarajan and Sudeep, uh, Sudeep, sorry, thanks a lot for your time today. The market is taking a bit of a tumble right now. Uh, and, you know, once again, the broader market is the one where we have quite a bit of damage. Uh, just look at the intraday chart of a couple of stocks. We've been talking about Just Dial, but even InfiBeam. Uh, so a lot of these stocks where we have started to see some kind of uh, selling, Reliance Communications has moved to the low point. Uh, I, I just want to take a comment from Ashwani if he's still with us. Uh, uh, Ashwani, uh, so, uh, you know, this mid-cap uh, deleveraging seems to have started again, advanced decline at about 2 is to 3 now. Uh, your thoughts on whether, uh, you know, the, the next one or two hours could be interesting? See, the market kind of hesitated and then started to fall. So now I think it's taken a decisive turn, particularly, you know, yesterday's those FDI and banking stocks like ICICI, uh, you know, HDFC, Axis, these are the guys who could, uh, you know, uh, tumble and take even the large caps with them. I think uh, the mid-cap index went substantially into the green and has again started to fall. So there's a clear, you know, sell-off rally, uh, sell-on rally type of sense which is coming. So I think uh, this sort of opening should see follow-through. How long, that we'll see. But uh, today, you should see uh, substantial selling. Okay. Uh, well, we will come back to you for more stocks, uh, mm. Ashwini.